This may be the best all-around portable SSD. My name is Dion Schoenboom. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the T5 from Samsung. Now, if you've been a regular viewer of the channel, you will know that I upload multiple tech videos every week. Be sure to subscribe, by the way, if you're interested. But with that, I find myself spending more and more time waiting for projects to import, render, or export. And this is because I edit in Final Cut using an external hard drive. And I do this because the internal storage on my MacBook Pro is simply not enough. This is where the T5 SSD may be a perfect solution. Let's start off with the unboxing. You'll see that we have a very simple box that will protect and house the SSD during shipping. The T5 is the model that came after the T3 and before the current T7 model, which has slightly better performance and a fingerprint sensor, making the T5 a better value option, as most importantly, the performance is very similar, just without the fingerprint sensor. The T5 comes in different sizes, ranging from 500 gigabytes all the way up to two terabytes. I decided to pick up the one terabyte version. One of the most convenient things about this SSD is that it uses USB-C. In terms of performance, speed go up to 540 megabytes per second, both in read and write, but more on that later. The drive is very portable, weighing in at just 51 grams. Additionally, all the cables are included. Now that we've done the unboxing, let's take a closer look at the drive. First impressions, it's a very small drive, even smaller than I had anticipated. It is also cool to the touch thanks to the aluminum unibody design that looks very sharp and minimalistic. I particularly like these chamfered edges that kind of reminds me of the iPhone 5S and gives the drive a classy look. I chose the black color to best pair with my Space Gray MacBook Pro, but do bear in mind it definitely does show fingerprints. The drive also comes in multiple different colors. I imagine the lighter colors will be less prone to showing fingerprints. Let's take a quick look around the drive. On the front, we have the name of the drive as well as the Samsung logo. On the left side, we find the USB-C port as well as an LED indicator light that will turn on when the drive is connected. Now, just to give you a sense of just how portable this drive is, I'm gonna go ahead and compare it to my iPhone 10. As you can see, my iPhone does have a leather case on, but even without the case, I would think the drive is no thicker than the iPhone 10 itself. And as you can see, in terms of height and width, it's just about half the size. Not to mention the weight, it is incredibly light. You can barely notice this in your pocket, for example. Alongside the drive, I did buy a nice hard shell case, as I do intend to travel once that is possible again. Now, as you can see, this case will have room to house two of these SSDs, as I very much see myself buying another one in the future, as so far, my experience has been great. Now, why would you want to consider an SSD over, say, a more traditional hard drive? Now, the biggest difference between the two is performance. The SSD will give you substantially better read and write speeds, in fact, up to 10 times faster. Additionally, SSDs are generally far more portable and lightweight. For example, this T5 here weighs just about a fifth of what this Western Digital My Passport drive does. As you can see, in terms of height as well as thickness, there's a substantial difference, making it far more portable and easy to travel with. Additionally, as is in the name, SSDs are solid state drives, meaning there is no moving parts, unlike say a traditional hard drive, which has spinning disks to read and write the data. This also makes SSDs far more durable and less prone to damage when dropped. So with all of these upsides, the choice seems obvious. So what's the catch? Well, SSDs are generally far more expensive compared to hard drives. However, this is where I find the T5 strikes a good balance between price to performance. This one terabyte version is currently available on Amazon for 130 US dollars, making it less expensive compared to other portable SSDs and not much more expensive than a traditional hard drive, especially considering the additional performance. So how will I be using the T5 and how will I incorporate it into my workflow? Well, as I mentioned before, I've been editing a lot more videos lately, and my intention is to edit all my future videos straight on the T5. Now, you might think that one terabyte of storage will run out quickly, and you'd be correct. But my intention is only to edit two to three projects at a time on the SSD, then move them over to my hard drive when I'm done editing them. This way, they are backed up on a hard drive with many more times of storage, and I can still get that fast performance when editing current projects, as once I'm done editing, I simply transfer it and delete the files on the SSD, clearing space for next videos. With all that in mind, let's go ahead and set up the drive, and I'm gonna run through some speed tests. Gonna go ahead and use the cable that came with the drive. Once again, I really like that this is a nice and short cable that actually also feels very sturdy, not to mention the included cable tie is always a nice touch. So let's go ahead and plug in this cable. Since this is USB-C to USB-C, I can plug in either end. 
And here we go, if we take a look at Finder, we'll now see the Samsung T5 over here on the left as locations. You'll see it does come with some pre-installed software. Let's go ahead and first reformat this for macOS. To do this, I'm gonna go ahead and launch Disk Utility. Once the app is open, I'm gonna select the Samsung T5 from the options list and we'll click on Erase. From here, we can go ahead and rename this. Let's call this Dion's T5. Now in terms of format, this will depend on your use case. I'm gonna be using the drive only with macOS, so therefore will format as macOS extended journaled. If on the other hand, you're gonna be using your drive with both macOS and Windows, I suggest formatting as XFAT. Let's go ahead and select macOS journaled, and then we'll click on erase. This shouldn't take long as the drive is already empty. And there we go, just a few seconds later, it is now complete. And as you can see, it will show up under the new name as Dion's T5. Okay, so now that the drive is properly formatted for macOS, I'm gonna go ahead and run through some speed tests. Now to do this, I'm gonna be using Blackmagic's disk speed test that you can find on the App Store for free. And we can press start to begin. Now this test is gonna be checking both the read as well as the write speed. Taking a look at the results from this speed test here, you'll see that we have 481 megabytes of write speed and 523 megabytes of read speed. Both of these numbers are higher than what is advertised by Samsung, and this is really great to see. Now to put these numbers into perspective, I'm gonna go ahead and run the same test on this Western Digital My Passport 4 terabyte hard drive. Let's see how they compare. And the results are in, let's take a look. So as you can see, the read and write speed are both double digit numbers, seeing around 42 megabytes of write speed and 43 megabytes of read speed. This is just about a 10th of what the T5 could deliver. So the results from this test should give you an idea of just how much faster the T5 or an SSD is compared to a traditional hard drive. Don't get me wrong, regular hard drives are still great options for many different use cases. For example, backing up or creating archives of files where the priority is less speed and more amount of storage. As at the end of the day, hard drives still give you the far best gigabyte per dollar value. However, when it comes to tasks where performance is key, such as video editing, photo editing, or anything that requires large amounts of data being moved frequently and quickly, for such a use case, in my opinion, this T5 from Samsung is really the ideal choice, as this gives you the best of both worlds, being external storage that also provides performance much more similar to the built-in SSD, for example, found on your MacBook. So hopefully that helps you out with your buying decision. If you have any further questions, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching.